started collecting that in uh, January. So the next one we get, I can check and see how much is. They do have it. I did send them a notice to let them know y'all had adopted it. Uh, I seen a notice that went out to the businesses. That it did. It was in October or something. Started, yeah, right? they were supposed to, but they couldn't, remember, because they didn't get notified when it happened. So they, the day those businesses got the notice was after the time it would have started coming out. They couldn't collect it, in other words. At the well, time. That would be right, October to start in January. That'd yes, right. mm -hmm. starts in January. I'll show you the letter. I got a copy of it. Okay. okay. Now, I didn't see no gas bills for February. Gas bills. Yeah. The, the fleet card, we just changed cards. Um, there are some. They're not through Heroes. Is that maybe what you missed? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, Let's see, Universal Premium, right? That's who they would be made out to. It's a, a card with Universal Premium that we were using and we switched now to Fleet. Uh, Fleet Texas, isn't it? Fleet Texas, Fleet Texas Fleet Fuel. And the purpose of that is we get uh, the tax, the federal tax. We're not charged federal tax if we use that. So that's why we changed. <coughs> Do we need to act on that CD now? I think it's in the it's agenda. Later. It's on the agenda. You can okay. put it down there. Or... Okay. Next item on the agenda is uh, Mr. Clark, 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 and Waiter. Okay. Um, the municipal court uh, for the period of February 1st to 28th. Uh, total collections were $13,486.50. Uh, the amount held by local local fees and fines is $7,658.93 for the city and $5,827.57 to the state. The number of cases filed, 213 cases paid in fines, 27. Uh, Non-prosecutor are dismissed, 21. Cases by trial, 20. Cases disposed by driver safety deferred and compliance dismissals, 20. For total cases completed, 88. Um, the uh, conditional waiver, uh, as some of you know, the judge did not give his training. That's where I was just to be Yeah, he, uh, uh, he was appointed to two years, and he was required to take 16 hours of training the first year and 16 hours the second year. He did not get his training the first year, so um, he was put on notice by the board. Um, he agreed to step down um, while he got his training and while the board decided how they were going to handle it. And by that I mean the state board that determines uh, whether it's uh, judicial misconduct or whether they waive it. And uh, they met on February 20th and they issued a conditional waiver uh, and he can uh, return to the, uh, they're not waiving it completely, they're not filing judicial misconduct, but he has to take an additional 16 hours of training. So it's a conditional waiver to let so him. So he uh, cannot come back until he does No, he, he could have, he could have the whole time. He was asked not to until he got his training right. and he agreed to that. But now he needs? No, he's coming back March the 11th. Um, and so um, he, he has to go ahead and uh, get his additional 16 hours of training. That's 131 with 174 violations. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the largest That's we've ever had. We'll, um, we'll make it through. Okay. Okay. Uh, police department? Chief? He's, he's oh. Chief's on vacation, so okay. you're stuck with me. <laughs> and uh, I have the staff report for the month of February. Uh, we have one assisted other agencies, and that was Bear County. We had one uh, verbal dis disturbance, which was out there at the Beck Road and uh, 87 at the State Department uh, office building. We had one business alarm. We had 13 impounds and 15 releases. 
And I just want to add a little bit of stats here for since the inception of our program, October 2014, the police department has impounded 74 vehicles for various violations. 60 have been released, 14 pending release, with eight subject to auction. And at auction time, the city will receive 50% of the sale price minus the all tax expenses. And then we investigated two motor vehicle accidents. Uh, one report for city ordinances, but that report addressed uh, eight different properties in the Tierra Bonita subdivision. And then we had uh, four civil matters uh, that we investigated for a total of 23. You will also find attached to your stat report the actual breakdown and description of each investigation that we performed and conducted. Any questions? Do you want to sit down in your car park? Do you want to Good evening, how's everybody doing? Okay. Good to see everyone. All right, Chattanooga Fire Rescue Monthly Road Report for the month of February 2015. Total calls for the month, 70. Of that, structure fires one, grass fires, brush fires three, vehicle fires one, unauthorized burns four, activated fire alarms two, motor vehicle collisions 10, assist public one, EMS calls, these are the ones medical in nature, 48, and Acadian transports, 24. Also, I'd like to let everybody know, uh, the citizens of China Road, that there still is a burn ban. Uh, we do allow burning on certain days, depending on weather conditions. And what I need the people to know is that this is not something that is owed to you or that the city of China Grove has to do. They do this, they afford you the privilege to allow you to burn trash and brush and things like that. They don't have to, but they, they chose to do that, to work with the people out here. So they had ordinances in place that uh, pertain to open burning. I follow, or should I just leave back up? I look at what Bear County does for the day, what the fire marshal for Bear County does. Doesn't mean I have to follow what they do or what they say because we have our own ordinances in place. And if I tell someone there is no burning allowed today, and they come back and say, well, the county's allowing burning, and I tell them, well, that's the county. We have our own ordinances, so we tell you, you know, if you're going to be able to burn or not. You know, because I'm standing right here, I'm looking out my window and watching the trees bend as the wind is blowing. So I really don't care what Fair County says. Uh, it's depending on what I say. I look at the weather conditions, you know, humidity, all the things that matter, all the factors, and then I make my determination. But I take into consideration also what Fair County says, but I also take into consideration that they're downtown and we're out here, and it could be different. But I've had some people that have gotten arguments with me about this, and I mean, take professionalism, but told them, look, we don't have to allow you to burn. The city of China Grove does that, and that's really great. And that's, and that's, a lot of municipalities do not allow open burning. So the people of China Grove are fortunate that we have this ordinance in place that allows you to do that. But please remember, it's not a right, it's a privilege. Okay, so myself or the, the ladies here at City Hall tell you no, and it's no. Call back the next day, try again, okay? But don't get in arguments with them or myself over this, okay? Because uh, again, it's not a right that you're owed, it's a privilege, and you can make sure that you understand that. That's all I have, thank you. It's time for citizens to be heard. It's time for our citizens to address city council any issues, concern. No city council discussion or action can be taken. If not, it's not on the agenda. Mayor reserves the right to option to recognize person. Anyone speaking who is not recognized by the mayor will be considered in violation of the rules of the meeting and will be escorted out from the meeting. All the recognized persons shall address the mayor. Please enter your arms to three minutes to state your name and address for the record. No personal attacks shall be allowed. 
First one he has is Victor Minos. Uh, just uh, good evening. Um, I'm going to open the gun shop right here at the Deptalus Hardware. Gun shop just left. I'm just coming in. And basically I'm here to seek your approval for that, business, that type of business. Ooh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check now. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chair and council people here. I enjoy this time of year, different times. What I'm here for, excuse my uh, throat here, but I'll get through this. I have a check here for uh, the fire department for Mr. Winter. Well, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, spend it all on one side. I mean, that's me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. And also, I'm, I'm trying to uh, extend our friendness so that we're good neighbors and everything. And uh, <clears throat> the thing that uh, I'd like to bring up, I took some pictures of you, what you put out, you know, farm works and stuff like that. <clears throat> We will, if you'll let us, we'll help make those, pay for them, and help put them out. Make them bigger, smaller, or how you want to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that. So what you need to do is, uh, if you decide that that's what you want to do, I'd like to leave a card, and call me, and we'll go from there. Okay? Okay. And let's see, what else do I have? I'm hurrying here to put my hand. Um, we're not shooting, having any more demos at our place. Uh, but if the city of China Grove has some kind of event and you need some fireworks to shoot, stuff like this, for a show, get in contact with us. We'll help you all we can. I wrote down some other things. Yes, the last on the agenda that I was trying to bring to you are stands. Here, close. We're going to make some uh, handouts to back up. No shooting fireworks within China Grove City limits. So everything is sold. That's going to fall right with it. That's okay, there you go. Okay. So that's all I have. And I, I see your firework stands are now becoming or being made out of metal. Well, we're doing that because they're, uh, it's really cheaper to make them and then to build them from home skids. Yeah. And uh, they're a lot harder to move, but it's, it's more economical. So yes, uh, we'll get those out of the way. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Barry Council. My name is Ed Lee. I live on Tree Bend. And uh, I've got a few concerns that I'd like to uh, get some bullet statements out. First of all, I want to say that anything I say is nothing personal. I think the fire chief runs a very good organization. Look how sharp they are. <laughs> so, with that, ESD. Uh, I've heard the rumors that we're supposed to be able to vote on an ESD coming in May. I don't know if it is, if it ain't. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter one way or the other. When it gets here, it'll be there or it won't be there. But in the meantime, I don't know if everybody read the article in Express News that uh, Bear County Commissioner Kevin Roof, uh, Wolf wrote <laughs> with his concerns about Bear County ESDs, period. Um, you go back a few years and almost every one of the ESDs has had major problems, uh, including the commissioners, uh, probably jail time. But uh, there's too many unanswered questions in my mind 
that I don't know about, and I would think the rest of the citizens have many of the same questions that I've got. Is ESD good for child growth? Well, first of all, is it good for me? Because it's going to hit my pocketbook. It's going to hit everybody else's pocketbook. It may be good. I, I really don't know. Uh, it, it could be good or it could be a Kevin Wolf fiasco. <clears throat> um, I don't know, I didn't know this for a while, but I don't know if the citizens of China Grove knows that the city of China Grove owns nothing except a building. Just, that's my understanding. Uh, the equipment that's in that building does not belong to the city of China Grove, is my understanding. Um, city, uh, citizens pays dues to the fire department uh, city pays donates or ever how you want to call it out of the budget. My understanding is sixty six thousand a year, and who does that go to? Um, it goes to. I know that it goes to run the department to buy fuel, insurance, upkeep, and everything else. Nowhere am I indicating that there's any wrong doings. It's just, where is it at? So, um, in that regard, the fire department is a nonprofit organization. Do you have a 990 on file for the fire department? Okay, a 990 is required by IRS to be filed if you make over a certain dollar amount. The 990 indicates <laughs> the name of the organization, who is the CEO, who's the officers, and everything else down the line. I think that it would behoove the city of China Grove to look into that, into that 99. Just lay it on the table. It's either there or it's not there. Um, you can get this off the internet. It's supposed to be on the internet uh, on a lot of different ways. You can ask the nonprofit for a copy of the 990 and so on like that. But dollar-wise, certain level, it is required by law to be compensated. If we become uh, an ESD district, will the city continue to provide $66,000 to who? Uh, I would put a big question mark about that because as it stands now, we have got a little bit of say-so about where our money is spent and so forth like that. And there's a memo of understanding that if Mike needs something, then he prioritizes a list and gives it in, and if it's in the budget, he gets a cut of it. So I think that's a, a question mark there. If we become an ESD district, do we continue to provide money to fire protection? Um, that's something we need to think about, I believe. I think that people needs to be educated on this issue. I uh, saw in the uh, minutes that uh, there was a request to, to get a committee together for pros and cons. Well, the committee is fine. 
I think that ought to continue, but I also think that there should be a town hall meeting so that everybody and his brother can come in and if they've got a question about it, then the players that's playing this game would be here to answer it. Um, I think that uh, we have a town hall meeting. We invite all of the whoever that's got a part of this to make a presentation of their organization going down to 990. Who is it? Who's their officer? Their budget? Where is it at? Where is it going? After all, we pay dues and we're putting money out of our budget into this issue. Um, make a presentation with charts and who is who. This will help to educate city council, the people of Town and Grove, where they will know more about how to vote. Right now, I don't know which way I would vote, whether it would be left or right. What's, what's the best thing for my pocketbook? Whoop, it's over here. So, um, I think that a town hall meeting to open it up, air it out, and uh, educate the people. I heard the word education on this issue months ago, and I still think it's a valid point, because I guarantee you some of the things that I've brought up here, the people in China Grove does not know about it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a ball of wax that uh, needs to be unraveled a little bit. Uh, the other thing I understand if we go ESD, that uh, our territory will be increased drastically. Would they be moving vehicles from this point to that point and so forth? All of those questions like that could be answered. Uh, in a town hall meeting. Okay, bottom line. Um, with the increase in the taxation that we would come under, 10% or 100, would it uh, help us? Would it give me and the citizens anything that I don't have right now? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wants to speak? Next item on the agenda, a little business. Discuss resolution of artists for adoption of the International Public Code.
slim, slim, slim chance that uh, the ESV vote will happen in May. Uh, speaking with Tommy Gallagher's office, uh, they told me that he doesn't know anything about ESD, so he's trying to get himself educated. He's got some safety classes that teach about ESDs, and he's still trying to learn. Uh, last thing I talked to him five weeks ago, they told me that they wanted to set up a meeting with myself, Kyle Coleman, and Scott Lampard. And we get to receive word from him. I can't get a hold of them. I uh, heard he's real overwhelmed by their things going on. So we don't believe that it's going to happen in uh, May. So we're going to continue working for the next election, uh, which is like possibly maybe November. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> and the reason we haven't really had any more information out there because there has been no information. We had the ball rolling. We've had some setbacks. One of the setbacks was uh, Lono, who's going to be part of this ESB, had an area that was actually in the city of St. Kevin with ETJ that they've been servicing since their inception. Well, uh, St. Kevin decided they didn't want to give it up. The fire department did. They wanted to keep it and maintain it themselves. So we had to go to their city council to try to get approval on them releasing the ESD to. Uh, or that ETJ area to our ESD, and they chose not to. They chose to keep it in the city of, or for the city of St. Henry. Well, the fire marshal's office from Bear County is really not on board with that, so there's a lot of legality stuff going on there. Uh, that was one hurdle because when they did that, they had to go back and change all the maps and petitions because they had already stated that this ETJ area was part of that, going to be part of the ESD. So that slowed things down. So finally, they got everything over to the district attorney's office uh, so that they could look over things to make sure that all the legal terminologies were correct and all these things. Well, the problem is Susan Reed got beat out. So then it came to her staff who were reading over this and told the Bear County Fire Marshal, we want to make some changes, or excuse me, yeah, Bear County Fire Marshal office, we want to make some changes to this uh, petition and it's okay. Well, when Susan Reed got beat, her staff now were now more concerned about keeping their jobs or packing their stuff. So the ball got dropped. Uh, and then I had called Scott Lampard several times and he was trying to get the ball rolling again. Well then we understood that uh, and they're denying us, but Tommy Calvert's office had called our Fortune office, Bear County and told him to put a hold on it until Commissioner Calvert got in office so that he could kind of take a look at things like that. I told the secretary they denied, but it came from a real good source that this is what happened. So the ball has been dropped. It's not been picked back up. Uh, so right now we're in limbo. And the reason we don't get more information out of Tom Hall means is at this point they're useless because if we start telling you everything about it now, about the ESD, the pros and the cons of ESD, by the time the election comes around, we'll forget all about it. When's the best time? Is when we know that for sure that we are going to be having an election. Our plan is to get out there and tell everybody. My plan is not to get out there and waste people's time now. Okay? I'm a very busy man, I got a lot going on. When something is important to me, I'll take care of it. Right now, there's nothing of importance because there's nothing that's going anywhere. Okay? Um, and, you know, like Mr. Lee said, and there's, you know, I'm not picking on you or anything, but, you know, I'm going to say my piece. Uh, we do want to get out and educate people because when uneducated people make statements and they don't know what they're talking about, this is what you get. Okay? For one thing, we do not get $66,000 a year. From city council, we get six sixty thousand dollars, and we have more in a contract. We are not the city of China Grove Fire Department. Okay, we kind of through contract. We they contract with us to provide service to the city of China Grove, and that's what we do. I'll be happy to do any paperwork what y'all need. We're not hiding anything. We're not doing anything wrong. We taking care of business. And the one thing, you know, Mr. Lee brought up about what can we provide that he don't already have? Peace of mind. Because if we shut the doors down and everybody leaves, who's going to come reopen? Who's going to run calls? Okay? I've been doing this going on 19 years. I've been chief over 13 years. I always make sure those doors come up and down. And yes, we've taken on a lot now. We've got Harmony now because they're fixing to put out business. I have friends over there, people that I care about. I didn't want to see them go out like that. So we got with the uh, fire marshal office and we have taken over the operation of Army. I'm the fire chief for here and Army. Yes, our call line has gone way up. But the bottom line, when those calls go out, it's people that need help. 
And I don't care if they live in my area or somebody else's area. When somebody needs help, I'm going. Okay? I've always watched the budget, the things that we buy, our gear, paper apparatus, fuel, insurance. And like everything, insurance is one of the highest things that we have now. And it's because of, as we know, all the frivolous lawsuits and all the things that go along with that. We have to pay a high dollar to provide insurance. Our contract with Bear County mandates that we have insurance, and it's high dollar insurance, but we have to have it in order to have a contract with them. So that's part of doing business. Training is part of doing business. And now I'm getting into, to be honest with you, the, the problem we're getting to have is I have hardly any members of my fire department that live in the city of China or the responding, or responding area. The majority, I have some that live in Alamo Heights, Cheryl Hills. Uh, they live south of here and all that. And we're very fortunate that these people come over here and want to be part of this because they don't have to. They don't get compensated at all, not one cent. But they come over here because they want to do this. Uh, and a lot of them are just fresh out of the fire academy, so they have to have continuing education hours. So I get a hold of them and tell them, you need to come over here, we can get you your continuing ed education hours, run calls, take care of the people over here. And they do it. And they're dedicated. We started our night last night, right before midnight, running a call. We actually assisted Harmony. 3 09 in the morning, we had an assault up at the trading post that we got up for. Okay? While everybody else was sleeping, nice and cozy, warm in their bed, we got up to run a call that we wound up signing refusals. So we got out of bed realistically for nothing. But we got up because that's what we do. And then this morning, about 11 o'clock, it started. We were running like nine calls in a row, back to back. Some of them had been thrown up because they were short on manpower. And that's the other thing is we provide a lot of mutual aid. Because why? Because this department takes care of business. We answer our tones. We get up when we're called. We don't ask any questions. We don't ask for any money or anything like that. We help our neighbors. Why? Because... If somebody's house over here catches fire or something big goes down, they're coming to help us. Why? Because they owe us. They owe us big time. And I make sure of that, that they understand that. Okay, so again, we're extremely busy. And we want to educate the people about the ESD. Because is it a good thing? Yes. Why? Because it will provide the necessary funds for us to continue our operation. Things aren't getting cheaper. They're getting more expensive. Mayor, as you know, and as Susan knows, and Reda, because they take care of the police department, anything that deals with first responders is an expensive proposition. You got to provide the fuel, the insurance, the training, you know, the equipment, all these things. It's, it's not cheap, and it's not getting any cheaper. It's getting more expensive. We're not going to go out of business. We'll find a way to make ends meet, and we're going to meet what we need to get and, pro and provide our people with it. I believe in providing my firefighters with the best possible equipment. They're putting their lives on the line to save the people around here for free. So all I ask from the city is help me to provide them with the equipment and apparatus. First and foremost, that will keep them safe so they can go home at the end of the call. And the next thing is so they can be proud to serve the China Grove Fire Rescue. And right now, they are those things. They are safe and they are proud. And that's all I ask. The other thing that's it we're running into is the manpower situation. I'm telling you right now where it's heading. We're going to wind up having to pay firefighters to do shifts down here. We're going to have to have paid firefighters. That's all over Bear County now. That's all over the state of Texas. Very few actual 100% volunteer fire departments. They're all becoming combination departments because it's too hard to find people to do this. That can do it with jobs and home life and all these other things, they cannot do it and they will not do it anymore. Volunteering is way, way down. And because of that, we can't, well, you know what, we're not getting anybody here, pull the doors down and we're out of business. We have to continue doing business. We just got to find a way to continue to do it. And where we're heading right now, I'm telling you right now is, and that's why the ESD was so important, is being able to have paid staffs. Because that way we're constantly providing care for the people who dial 911 and the people for our response there. Not one cent, not one penny goes in my pocket. 
Everything that we get from the city and from Bear County goes into making us a safer, more efficient, more effective operation. So as we get word that the ESD has been picked back up and they're running with it again, we're going to get with everybody, not just from this area, but we're Harmony and Lone Oaks area, because there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of misconceptions out there. There's a lot of false things going on. We want to clear all of those up. And I'm not telling you, you know, you got to vote this way or whatever. You're entitled to your opinion, every single one of you. Just please let me educate you on what's right and what's wrong. That's all I ask you. Let me educate you, because I want to do that. I want to answer all your questions. And just because some of you don't think the way I do, I don't think any of I still think of you as friends. My people, you know, my fellow people from China Grove, it's not going to change the way I think about you. What I'm talking about is business. And that's all, all it is, is business. Okay? I'm in charge of running that, and i got to do what's best for business over there. What's best for business over there is taking care of all the people around here. That's all I want to do. And even when we go ESD, there's not going to be a penny going in my pocket. I got to pay for volunteer fire, excuse me, firefighters to come over here and man the station so that they can respond to the people in, in their time of need. And <clears throat> I think sometimes people have a misconception that we do this, it's an eight to five job Monday through Friday. It's not. There's many, many times that we get up in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, it's storming, rain outside, cold, 32 degrees or less. We get up and we run these calls. We work calls on the highway. Uh, and when we're out there, it's very dangerous because we're out there at the hour when all the DWIs are out there. And there's many, many times we've had to dodge cars coming through a wreck scene and stuff like that. We did it today on a wreck. We did it at 1604 and, and, and uh, Sulphur Springs. We're having to dodge cars. They're going the wrong way and coming down the wrong side. And it's very dangerous what we do. And like I said, there's not going to be a penny of it. Even when we go ESD, not a penny of it's going in my pocket. It's all going to go to provide better, safer, more effective, more efficient help where the citizens are our responsibility. And again, everybody's entitled to your opinion, and it's not going to change the way I think about you because you don't side with me. You're entitled to your opinion. All I ask is please let me educate you. Because I know a lot about ESCs because I, I made it a passion of mine to find out because there was so much false information out there. I want to collect, clear all that up. I want you to know the truth. Okay, and I'm not going to pull a wool over your eyes or anything like that or try to slide something by you. I'm going to tell you the hard facts, the truth. And that's all. And you make your decision from there. But please, with an open mind and open heart, allow me to educate you. Hi, I have a question. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. The deadline for those petitions to get it on the ballot, the main ballot is... It's so, already passed. Yeah, so happen. that's not... Yeah, it's happen. not going to happen. Okay. just want to clarify that. So. All right. Thank you. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. I, I would like to thank Mike for the explanation that he gave. He cleared up right off the bat about the ballot. And I'm sure that, you know, rumor has it on it, all of it, or whatever. But Mike, I want to appreciate what you said. Thank you. One hundred percent. I know you're dedicated. I won't do them shoes. I've been there at three in the morning. Uh, but you used the word education, and that's all I was asking for. I got one question. Yes, your boss. You mentioned boss. Kyle Coleman, emergency management coordinator. Kyle Coleman. Okay. He's one of my two bosses. <laughs> and the fire kind of is the other one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yes, sir. You want to tell me? With that being said, I think we need to table this until it gets closer. And then at that time, we, will, we need to do to educate these people about the ESC. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'll second it. Second by Marty. Going to new business? Consider an act of firm department of Tiffany Lynn as Reserve Peace Officer of the General Police Department. At this time, I would like to present our new officers that we have recently hired for affirmation 
And our first officer is Officer Tiffany Agnian. And Tiffany, you just tell the, the group your experience. Hello, I'm Tiffany Agnian. I've been doing this since about 2001 where I started with the Fair County Sheriff's Office. Um, <laughs> I'm a mother, and <laughs> that's my primary duty. But, you know, full time, just trying to keep my license active.
Mr. Mayor, I one business per request to operate back town, tactical arm, gun shop, owner of Victor Munoz, 6750, Highway 7, building number one. Come on up. You know, as you know, I'm trying to open that gun shop there. Uh, there was a gun shop before. He's leaving. I uh, already put my deposit down. I mean, I guess it's a little presumptuous on my part, but uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm waiting on the license. Uh, it's already in the mail. Uh, I just found out I have to get a DBA for trying to grow, so I'm fully prepared to do that upon approval. So, so uh, I talked to Ted Tawas, and that guy was never there. He was only there two days out of the week. I plan to be there all the time. So hopefully I prosper there. It's going to be a full blown repair, sale? Uh, the, yeah, I need a totally different ATF license for that. Um, I'm, just, I'm going to call first before I walk. It's just going to be sales and uh, transfers. And maybe in another month or two, I'll start into the gunsmithing. The sales of ammunition? Ammunition, ammunition and, and weapons and uh, uh, transfers. You know, ownership transfers. Uh, New and used. What's that? New and used. Uh, well, new in the beginning. Used, I mean, I guess consignment and stuff like that. I'm yeah. not into that in the future. So, mm -hmm. just, that's pretty much. Well, I make a motion to uh, allow Victor Munoz to operate the gun shop like it does. The mm -hmm. black cat, was it Italian? Black cat, black cat. I'd like to second, but I'd like to make one statement there. We, we really appreciate it if you'd really, you know, make it as safe as possible when you're handling the things, really. Well, definitely. Uh, I'm going to be scrutinized by ATF. I mean, I even told them that my hours are going to be six days out of the week. They can come by any time they want. So I'm going to be regulated by them pretty, pretty strong. So. And I can't sell anything. Uh, just a little note, I can't sell any handguns without the lock on them, so they all have to have the cable locks or any kind of safety feature. Uh, that's the only way I can sell them, so that's an added. And anything that'll be displayed will have the locks on them. Oh, okay. definitely, yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Do you have a motion? Yeah, I'm motion. Second. All those in favor, Senate? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried.